Hey everybody, today I wanted to take a look at the uh, HID reading rig that I made uh, for the live stream we did a couple weeks ago uh, and talk about a couple of the problems that I've discovered with it. Okay, so um, real simple, I uh, basically got a HID reader off of eBay for, I don't know, 15 bucks or so, something like that. Um, made a little wooden door, uh, not much of a construction expert, but basically what we got is an Arduino Uno uh, over here, um, which is acting sort of as the brains to the reader. I've got a couple of uh, power regulators, so voltage regulators right here. To drop it down um, and then I've got a solenoid to activate the electronic um, the magnetic lock so what my idea was is I was going to power it off of a 24 volt um, AC DC power regulator power converter and just kind of plug that right in as you can see um, it's basically just kind of split out uh, it's nothing real nothing real fancy obviously it, it functions but what I was doing is breaking it out so I could run uh, one into a voltage regulator to down to 12 volts so I could run the the lock itself because it runs on 12 volts. Um, the Arduino of course runs on 5 volts so I've got that running and powering the Arduino which in turn powers the solenoid uh, and then the 24 volt lead went up around and actually to the reader itself. Um, everything seems to have worked fine but what I found was very interesting is I was having some read issues. Uh, cards would read just fine but I was not able to pick up my hand, the RFID chip that's actually in my hand, unless I really smushed it in there. Um, and it got me kind of doing some troubleshooting because I know at the office, uh, when we go into the office, uh, I'm able to read my hand just fine. You know, I, I have to get really close to the reader, um, but it, it works. I definitely don't have to like, you know, jam my hand in there and twist it around. So I was kind of curious what could possibly be going on here. Um, so what I did is for an experiment um, is tried a couple of different power sources. So one thing I learned is the hit readers themselves really like, um, Okay, so one thing I learned is that the readers themselves do not like switching power supplies. What they really prefer is linear power supplies. And I'm not able to really get a hold of one right now. Everything that I've seen online or can find that runs at 24 volts that's reasonably priced um, is a switching power supply. They're very uh, common these days. So getting a linear power supply seemed to be a bit of a challenge. So what I ended up doing is just grabbed a uh, cordless drill uh, battery this one happens to be 19 volts uh, but you know got some leads put on uh, the power and I can power the the reader that way 19 volts uh, comes out to, well after fully charged it's like 21 volts works just fine uh, to to power it up but here are some of the interesting things that I've learned so let's go ahead and hook up this power supply okay. and we'll Plug it into the mains power. All right, so Arduino is obviously getting power. I don't know if you can see the LED there. Um, so everything, if we put a voltmeter on it, uh, everything is, is transitioning just fine. Um, so here is the interesting part. So we've got the reader hooked up. I'm just gonna flip this around. And what I'm gonna do is put the battery on the leads to the reader. So just hooking up uh, negative and then positive. We should get some beeps here. Cool, so the reader's working. Um, now they're on two completely independent power sources, right? So we've got a battery powering the reader and we've got um, the 24 volt um, AC-DC power converter um, running the actual Arduino and everything else. So if we use a HID card, it doesn't want to work or works very poorly, I guess I should say, right? Yeah, I really have to cram it in there. And it definitely does not read my hand. Um, so what I was experimenting with or what I figured out is let's disconnect this from the actual mains power. Disconnect that. So now the Arduino is not powered, um, all the power relays and the switches are off. 
but the um, I think I got a short wire in here. Let's fix that. There we go. So now just the reader is powered. So now it works much better, right? I don't even have to come anywhere near close to it, which is what you'd expect from a head reader. And it certainly reads my hand just fine, which is what I normally expect when I go to my office. Um, so what I'm what I've come to the conclusion um, is something back here is causing me an issue. So in this tangle of wires that I've created, something back here is causing interference, some kind of EM interference to uh, interact uh, with the with the reader. Um, I can sort of prove that because what I did, the reason this is sort of destroyed, is I took it all apart. So let's take this off. Actually, I can take the reader off the wall here, maybe. All right, so I take the reader off the wall. And again, I'll power the Arduino and uh, lock and solenoids and everything off of the 24 volt AC DC power converter. And if I stick the reader back on to the battery, get this hooked up. Okay. Obviously, they're they're not hooked up, right? It's it's completely different. And I can read my hand. It beeps. But what's interesting is when I get it back into the proximity of where it lives, um, I have a hard time uh, reading my hand again, right? So if I have it sort of off to the side, it works well. I still, now I have to physically touch it, but if I'm like over here away from the field altogether, um, I can get within maybe an inch, half inch or so and read it just fine. So. There's definitely some EM interference happening over here, and my guess is what I was going to find out is the power um, or the voltage regulators. Um, they are um, less expensive ones. There is, this is obviously not a high end setup. The most expensive thing in here is actually the lock. Um, everything else is pretty pretty cheap. But what I was going to do is to prove to myself it wasn't the Arduino is disconnect. Uh, the power uh, so the Arduino is no longer powered on and actually try to run the Arduino directly from a computer source so that way it's getting uh, 5 volts um, and it's not actually being converted so now the Arduino is powered taking the power regulators excuse me the voltage regulators the solenoid and the lock sort of out of the mix taking that electronic uh, components out Battery is still hooked up to the um, card reader. So let's put the card reader back into sort of where it belongs. And look at that. It works just fine. Um, sounds different because my finger was over the button, but right. So I don't think it has anything to do with the Arduino. I'm pretty sure we're going to find it has something to do with the probably the power converters um, or possibly. I can't believe it would be the lock um, or the solenoid. The solenoid is running off of five volts straight from the Arduino. The Arduino is actually powering the uh, solenoid, which then turns flips the uh, flips the lock. So I just thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, I wanted to share it because um, it's just another step in you know trying to create my own um, HID reader rig that I can use reliably and it can be um, consistent. Uh, so I thought this was, was kind of interesting. So I think my next step is gonna be to try to figure out if I can actually shield uh, these power uh, voltage regulators. Maybe I put them down below. Um, maybe I move them off to the side somewhere else uh, and get them out of the way of the actual reader itself. Uh, so that's kind of where I was going to go next. Hopefully um, in the next week or so, I'll get that squared away and be able to sort of bolt this all back together. Um, unfortunately, I did a quick experiment where I took the um, uh, 24 volt uh, AC-DC power uh, converter and I attempted to run the reader directly off of it, thinking maybe now it will like a switching power supply because um, maybe it was the interference. 
but uh, unfortunately that's not the case. Uh, I'm still stuck with powering it off of a battery for now or trying to get a hold of uh, some kind of linear uh, power supply that I can that I can use. So that's cost effective, obviously. Um, certainly can buy one. I don't want to spend you know thousands of dollars on something like this. I was hoping to make it kind of cost effective. So we'll see, we'll see what I can do with the power. Um, but otherwise, that's, that's kind of where I was at with this. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting, so I wanted to share it. Uh, I'll also be throwing a schematic um, uh, link up there as well, so you can see you know, exactly how I have it all wired. So if you're an electronic uh, guru, you can point out where I've gone wrong. Um, that would be fantastic. I'm always happy to hear where my mistakes are made, and hopefully I can get this squared away. Then my next step is uh, once I get this squared away, I've been starting to write some Arduino code um, for this. I've got some basic stuff already working. Um, but I'm trying to make it a little bit more robust uh, so I can actually measure um, distances and stuff and I'm going to make a little uh, um, little slider uh, for that. So I'll, we'll be talking about that hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you find this interesting or educational. Um, let me know uh, in the comments. Uh, give me a thumbs up on the video uh, if you like this kind of thing. If not, uh, let me know. Um, Otherwise, yeah, consider subscribing. We're going to be doing uh, more, hopefully mixing in the implantable technology here real soon with uh, the Arduinos and kind of crossing, crossing that bridge, uh, crossing this over. All right, well, great. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon. Thank you for watching this episode of the Mayhem Lab. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like, and we will produce more videos like this one. Also, please consider clicking subscribe so you don't miss our latest content.